This is the second video reviewing mineral stability phase diagrams, or just phase diagrams. This video will focus on ternary phase diagrams and their application to igneous and metamorphic systems. Last time we discussed binary phase diagrams. Remember that a lot of the same ideas and concepts applied to binary phase diagrams are applicable towards ternary diagrams. We will start with a quick review of binary peritectic systems. For these systems, remember that at a consistent pressure, simple compounds, such as, as ice, melt at a single temperature. More complex compounds, like silicate magmas, have very different melting behaviors, melting or crystallizing at different temperatures, dependent upon the composition of the melt. In the last video, we began talking about these systems, but delayed the full discussion until it can be completed with the addition of ternary systems. Remember that a binary peritectic system is a system that is not solid solution and is similar to a eutectic system. Two, or in this case, in the case of peritectic systems, three phases are present in independent chemical compounds that when crystallized are 100% of the end member. The addition of the third phase creates a more complex system. In addition to the eutectic point, which is the minimum of the liquidus, a second inflection point referred to as the peritectic system is present. On the diagram on the slide, this is point I. There are still only two components in a binary peritectic system, but an intermediate phase, in this case encetite, is located between the, the end member phases. On the right side of the eutectic point, the behavior of the, of the forstrite silicate system is similar to the traditional eutectic system where the liquid follows the liquidus line crystallizing quartz until the liquid reaches the eutectic point. Once the liquidus reaches the eutectic point, encetite begins to form, and the system remains in a comp constant composition and temperature until a phase is lost. In this case, the liquid. Once the liquid is consumed, the system goes back to containing two phases, in this case cristobalite and encetite. Now let's explore the left side of the eutectic diagram with a liquid at composition F. As the system cools to 1800 degrees centigrade, the first solid phase begins to form, forstrite, and the system now has two phases. The composition of the forstrite is of composition H and is 100% forstrite. With further cooling, the liquid evolves along the liquidus line between points G and point I. At point I, or at 1557 degrees centigrade, a third phase is added, in this case encetite, and the system becomes invariant, or degrees of freedom equaling zero. Because F equals zero, all intensive parameters are fixed, as if the system is at a eutectic point, and remains at this composition and temperature indefinitely until the phase is lost. While at the invariant point, there are three phases in a two-component system, and all three phases are collinear, implying that a reaction must take place and we can determine the reaction geometrically. This time, the composition of encetite, point K, lies between the end member of forstrite and the liquid composition, and this is different from the eutectic point where the liquid falls off, falls in the center. As a result, we have a liquid reacting with a solid to produce a second solid as it cools. Once this, occur, once this occurs, a degree of freedom is obtained and a reactant consumed and the system can move away from the invariant point. In a peritectic system, the reactant consumed will be a solid in the FO SiO2 system, and in this case will be FO. Only in rare cases will both the liquid and the forstrite be consumed with the reaction going to completion. More commonly, only one will be consumed and the system will remain and resume cooling with the liquid evolving along the liquidus to a new solid forming the intermediate composition or go to completion by using the liquid. In our example with the composition of point F, the liquid will be consumed with the final product of the two solid phases consisting of forestrite and acetate. If we open the system and remove olivine as it crystallizes, the bulk composition shifts, and we assume the fractionation is effective, the system will always reach the eutectic point. 
This will occur even if the bulk starting composition is on the left of the enstatite composition line. This is an unusual situation where fractional crystallization does not affect liquid evolution without the solid solution. Now let's consider re melting reactions for a moment. If we begin with a pure enstatite and melt it, we produce a liquid of composition I, or the peritectic point, and a forsterite via the reaction of enstatite yielding forsterite plus liquid. We refer to this as an incongruent melting, where the solid melts to form a second solid phase and a liquid. All peritectic systems behave in this way, and a peritectic phase diagram may also be called an incongruent melting diagram. If we begin with a solid of forsterite and enstatite, the first melt will be of composition I, which is more silicic rich than both solids. Removing this melt and crystallizing it elsewhere, we get a final product consisting of two solids, crystobalite and enstatite, which is very different from the initial bulk rock composition. With increasing components, visualization of variables becomes increasingly difficult to depict. Ideally, we would add a dimension for each variable in F, but we are limited to two-dimensional graphs. The simplest three-component system is the ternary phase diagram with the eutectic point and no solid solution. This type of phase diagram combines two, three two-component diagrams in a singular, singular triangular diagram. This is because when we add temperature to our, to our three-component system and fix the third variable, in this case pressure, the triangular diagram allows the depiction of a two-dimensional surface on a three-dimensional diagram. When the number of components increases by one, the phase rule tells us that the variance increases by one as well. Thus, the one-dimensional liquidus curve in an isobaric pressure composition temperature binary phase diagram becomes a two-dimensional liquidus surface. A cotectic curve now separates the liquidus surface into three areas or more depending on the diagram. Each surface intersects at the lowest temperature point of the diagram, creating the eutectic point. In the binary system, each section of the liquidus corresponds to the liquid coexisting with a different solid. The same is true for a ternary system, and each area is labeled with the name of the mineral phases that coexist with the liquid in that particular portion of the liquidus part of the diagram. Peritectic points behave in a similar manner, but only at higher temperatures. Now let's use the phase rule to analyze the crystallization behavior of some melts in our ternary system. We begin with the composition of A on the diagram. When the system is above 1700 degrees centigrade, there is only liquid phase present and our degrees of freedom, or F, equals 3. At 1700 degrees centigrade, the first crystals of forsterite appear, adding an additional phase and changing our degrees of freedom from 3 to 2. Because the composition of pure forsterite is fixed, we still have the same variables to choose from as we did with our liquid-only situation but now we have to determine a second intensive variable to determine the state of the system. As temperature decreases and forsterite is depleted, the composition of the liquid moves away from the forsterite corner of the diagram towards the cotectic line between diopside and forsterite. Once the composition and temperature reach the cotectic point at point B, diopside is added as a solid phase, changing the degrees of freedom from two to one. Now, specifying only one intensive parameter completely determines the system. Since we fixed the composition of the solids, the composition of the solid is now dependent on the temperature and is constrained to follow the one-dimensional cotectic curve between the binary forsterite diopside eutectic and the ternary eutectic as cooling is continued. At any point during cooling, we can determine the percent of each mineral phase that is present and the percent melt for each given temperature using the lever principle. You can review how to do, use the lever principle from the additional videos on Blackboard or in your textbook. And don't forget we had a number of discussions on this last semester.
Equilibrium melting in a ternary system is simply the reverse of crystallization where the first liquid that will form will be of the eutectic composition, regardless of the starting composition. Because there is no solid solution in the system, if we open up the system and remove the solid phase as it forms, liquid evolution is not affected and the result will be the same as equilibrium crystallization. Remo removal of early phases, however, will change the final composition of the crystalline final product. If the solid is removed from the remaining liquid and the liquid evolves in an isolation, the bulk composition will reflect the new liquid composition and a new diagram will need to be constructed. The peritectic ternary diagrams are similar to that of the eutectic systems. Our time is going to be best spent as a result focusing on the peritectic behavior and we will only discuss the forced right enstatite system. For a bulk composition of A, cooling to a liquidous surface adds a solid phase of 100% forced right first and reduces the degrees of freedom to 2. The liquid composition moves away from the corners towards the cotectic line. When the composition reaches the cotectic line at point B, when encetite is added as a solid phase, this reduces the degrees of freedom from 2 to 1. Because F equals 1 and two solid phases are precipitated, the liquid will follow the cotectic line to point C, which is the peritectic point. You can always tell the final mineral assemblage to which a melt will eventually solidify via the equilibrium crystallization by noting the sub-triangle within the bulk composition plots. If the bulk composition is within the FOENAN sub-triangle of the system, those minerals will compose the final rock. A composition within the EN-AN-SiO2 subtriangle will move past the peritectic, or the point C, through the reaction of the liquid with the forced right, and the final mineral assemblage will consist of encetite, anorthite, and some silica mineral. In open system environments undergoing fractional crystallization, the system, regardless of starting the composition, will always go to the eutectic point, or point D, following eutectic curves. This is really the only change in the open system environments compared to the closed system environments. In our next couple videos, we will start to focus on how we can apply these ternary phase diagrams and binary phase diagrams when it comes to looking at different ways of displaying data, as well as looking at how we can produce magmas and differentiate those magmas to create the diversity of compositions of igneous rocks that we see on Earth.